a roadmap to school improvement gains. This program will help you make sense of the large quantity of data that your school collects, including state student achievement results as well as other qualitative and quantitative data. In Module 2, we will look at data categories and how to look at data. We will also study the history and evolution of data. In Module 3, you will learn how to collect specific data to make instructional decisions. Victoria Bernhardt provides a step-by-step -step approach to creating a school portfolio. It is the way we document all of those elements that make a difference for school improvement. As you listen to the categories, I think you can see that data is informing us of who we have as students, how we're doing in relationship to a vision. And Giselle martin Knepp and Ted Ripa show you how to analyze and mine data to target specific student needs. Um, the primary data source for schools is standardized tests or state tests, and those, those tests actually drive much of what happens, ends up happening in classrooms. Teachers, on the other hand, um, generate tremendous amounts of data, uh, classroom assignments, student work, even classroom tests are potentially wonderful sources of data, but for the most part, teachers don't treat them as data. They treat them as artifacts of their work. In the next module, you will hear from Michael Schmoker on how to develop an improvement plan based on data. And learn about using data in a professional learning community from Ann Delahunt. What kind of community can we build for learning? That's the learning of adults as well as the learning of kids. So I'm going to use the, the dimensions of a professional learning community that were developed. Finally, you will be given the opportunity to look at a real school case study and see an example of how to collect and analyze data. Included in this story, you will see how teachers matched assessment results with learning needs and how they use data to refine teaching strategies. I can observe who is the last student to finish or the last student that ends up just giving up because they're frustrated and they see everyone around them is ready. That student I know is the one that I may need to pull aside or work closely with or stand closer to to make sure that they are understanding what is being taught and if not, reteach.